Hey guys. So today's topic is about really answering the question that if I'm saved by grace, does that mean that I can now kind of live the way that I want um, as long as I follow some of the principles of God, as long as I go to church? Like, what does it actually look like in terms of what does God expect of me? Like, what is his expectations for my life and for how I'm supposed to live? And is Sunday enough? Or is giving my life to him, like, what does that really mean? And so anyways, let's just peel that back. Let's talk about it. Um, I'm going to be using two scriptures, one from the Old, one from the New Testament, and then just doing a bit of a contrast and comparison and seeing if we can look a little bit closer at more what God's expectations of us are or what his desires for us are. And yeah, let's just jump right in, okay? Okay, so the first scripture, I'm talking about the Old Testament in Ezekiel, and this is the sacrificing of animals. So before Jesus came, died on the cross for our sins, we were doing this with animals on a regular basis. And I mean, if we could just stop for a moment and take like just a general personal inventory, how frequently we sin on a regular basis, that's a lot of animals. And they weren't just like kind of the weak ones or the old ones. It was like perfect, strong, valuable animals being butchered on a regular basis to atone for our sins. So I'm, I really want to contextualize the fact that these animals were slaughtered and there was a process for their slaughtering. Um, if you love animals, probably shouldn't look up how they slaughtered these animals, but it wasn't pretty. That's what I can say about that. And so now I'm going to kind of move into the second scripture, which is in the New Testament, which is in Romans. And they're talking about your life being a sacrifice, holy and acceptable before God. So I mean, God's the same from the beginning to the end. Same God. So the same God who's expecting a sacrifice to be perfect, um, without blemish, which is why Jesus came, is the same spirit that is leading the writer in Romans to pen how our lives should look on this earth. So I'm not saying that, you know, the expectation of God is that we're going to live perfect lives because we just can't do that, right? And that is why Jesus had to come for us because we demonstrated in the Old Testament that by following the standards of the law, we would still find a way <laughs> to mess up the rules. So Jesus came under grace <laughs> Right? So it's it, it's truly like when we talk about good news, this is like there is something that fills the gap of for our imperfection, that graces us in that imperfection, Jesus. So, but I still want not to like hop over the fact that there's still a comparison point that's being made about the sacrifice same term that's being used for animals that are slaughtered and it and we're we're referencing it about our life that our life would be a sacrifice holy and acceptable our bodies would be a sacrifice that's a pretty heavy comparison i don't know about you but when i think of slaughtered animals and then i think of my life and my body being an an example that is intended to kind of reflect that that is a lot that that is really hard to conceptualize and think about it's hard for me to even 
look at my own life and say that I in any way like hit that marker or come close to that line because at all times we miss the mark, right? So we're, we're always in need of his forgiveness, um, always in need of his grace in those areas, but still within the same kind of, um, I would say token, we still want to look at the fact that we really are focusing on making our lives similar in that we're not just saying to ourselves like, okay, well, you know, I'll just see Jesus on Sundays and that's enough. He'll be okay with that. Or you know what? Like as long as I'm part of my, you know, my group in my church, that is sufficient. But that's not your life. That's part of it. But that is not a demonstration of you sacrificing your life. That is a commitment that you have made. So the intention is to kind of, in some respect, challenge the concept that our lives can just be made up as we go. That we can just say like, okay, well, I'm under grace. So... That means I kind of can do what I want. You know, I think that I really should create my business the way I want to do it. Um, I really think I should serve in the church the way I think I'm supposed to do it. I think I'm supposed to go to school for this reason. I think I should marry this person for that reason. We have all these things that we have kind of set before us to say like, yes, like going to church is part of my life or Sometimes I might pray or sometimes I might read my Bible, but that's a small fragment of my, my week, of my month, of my year, right? That's a small fraction of my life. Most of my life is actually dedicated to my children or my husband, right? That is not demonstrating, though, that our life is a sacrifice to him. And what does that look like? There's no simple, like, one-note answer for that. I'm not going to say, like, these are the six ways that you demonstrate that your life is a sacrifice to God. But it does follow after, do not be conformed to this world. So it's, it, I mean, it's not 100% peeled apart to say this is how we live as a sacrifice. But one of the continuations of that piece is that, this is kind of a hint, is that our life should not resemble this world. We should not be looking like everybody else. So that means that when I speak, my speech should be different from the world. My behavior should be different from the world. The way I love should be different from the world. The way my faith is should be different from the world. My plans should be different from the world, meaning that even inside of like wanting to create my own plans or my own itinerary of how my life is going to look, I'll tell you right now, this is, this is not at all how I expected my life to look at this age, at this time, at this junction of my life. There is nothing about this that I would have said, this is my desire or design for how this is going to look. And yet this is where God has me. And and I'm not saying that I am the marker, but I am saying that we need to, to look at our mentality around this to say, am I pursuing my own objectives? Am I pursuing my own expectations for my life? Or am I laying everything down at the feet of Jesus and saying, Lord, help me, show me what it looks like for me to live a life that is holy and acceptable before you. And that's not going to be found only inside the confines of a building that has to be found in relationship with him every single day. I just like stop and think for a moment what kind of relationship you would have with anybody that you only saw once a week for an hour and a half and that and you know it was in a really large gathering of people, okay? Like and then Versus like you have a personal relationship with someone every single day and then on Sundays you all gather together and, you know, fellowship and worship and, you know, 
come together to hear a word that is edifying. Like, imagine the comparison of the relationship that you can have and how much more you would know about what his expectations for you are. And I'm not saying it has to be this really like formalized process where I'm sitting there saying like, okay, you know, Lord, give me the next five year plan. It doesn't work like that. It, it's an everyday process and each day it's going to look different and the expectations are going to be different. And are you going to give everything up at day one? No, you're not. Day one, he'll take you through what is expected in day one, but it's each day coming before him and surrendering those things in front of him. It's not about saying, you know what, my dream is to go sell jewelry in a different country. But the Lord is calling you to be a teacher in America. Do you get what I'm saying? Like my, I can speak for myself, my personal dream and objective for myself. No, I'm not doing any of it. I would say the, the only, the only thing in some respect that I personally dreamed about before would have been graduate school. That's probably like the closest, but in terms of where I'm positioned professionally, where I'm living, um, the car that I'm driving, like there, <laughs> there are a lot of things that are happening in my life that were not in terms of my plan, the scope of what I initially wanted or what I thought would have worked out best for me. It, it doesn't mean that those things won't work out. It doesn't mean that when you sacrifice and you give you know, your plans and your life and your, your decisions to God, that it's not going to work out. But you have to be willing to say to yourself and to him, I'm going to let you make the decisions on this. That my life would be a sacrifice to you. So you sacrificed your life for me on the cross. And so now, in turn, I sacrifice my life on this earth to you. I give you my life here. My time is yours. What do you want me to do with this time? How do you want me to live? Who should I speak to? Where do I work? My life is a sacrifice to him. And again, he can still provide in that. He, not he can't, he will provide in that. And you will find fulfillment in that. But it's not going to come from you orchestrating your own plan about what it's going to look like. Maybe you are really talented in music. Maybe you're really talented in social media. Maybe you're really talented in, in fashion. I don't know. But that may not be where God wants you. It doesn't mean he may not incorporate those gifts later on. It doesn't mean that he can't use those things. But that may not be where he wants you. Just because you see people on, on YouTube or on Instagram or on TikTok who are saying, this is what you have to do and this is what it looks like. Did you consult the creator first? Because his plan for you might look different. Generally, it does look different. He gave them instructions, but what did he tell you to do? Did you ask him? Or did you make up your own decision about what it was going to look like? So to bring it all full circle back to the initial question that I kind of posed in the, um, in the description bar, which is now that I'm saved, now that I'm under grace, does that mean I can sin or I can just live life the way I want? No, the contrary. You are not required in the same way to live like this. So it's not necessarily like, that is why you're saved. So we are saved by grace. So no man can boast that he that they have been saved by God, right? So I can't say I saved myself because of X, Y, Z. But when you come into a relationship with someone and they're saying, I'm asking you to do these things, it is not a requirement, but I am saying to you I am that there is a benefit and that's what's really compelling about the scriptures and oftentimes that gets kind of hidden under the surface when people are talking about the Bible or maybe they're not really exploring the Bible. 
There is so much wisdom in there that can greatly enhance the quality of your life. And I am not saying this again as a selling point, but I'm saying that when you do it God's way, when you actually follow his design and his plan, it is significantly more fulfilling about how he made you than anything you could create on your own. Just imagine what it would be like if you created something and you had a design for it and the, the object itself was like, I'm going to do something different. But you weren't designed to do that. Maybe you have similar properties to that, but it doesn't mean that's how I created you. And there is something incredibly fulfilling about doing what you are created to do. And that is something that I don't, I think it's hidden in the scripture. It's hidden in, in, in this living your life as a sacrifice that is not always communicated within the community of, of you know, believers. But there is something that is vital about you finding not just a purpose, but your purpose. And your purpose is not separate from him. It is not going to just be something because you have a gift and a talent. Well, that means you should just pursue that talent. I have a talent for photography. I love taking pictures. That is not where I'm supposed to be right now. Does that not mean that I don't get to enjoy taking photos and using it to incorporate into my social media? No, I can use them that way. But I'm not designed to go run off to the Middle East right now and be a photographer in the war. That's not what he asked me to do. So we have to be a lot more discerning around that. And the only way we can cultivate discernment is through him. It's time with him. I, I know sometimes I might sound like a broken record, but this channel is always going to be centralized around him. That is why I made this channel, because he asked me to. Just so you guys know, I have no desire really to do this, to be, I, I don't really care to be a YouTuber. I, I, I have not, no, it's not really interesting to me. I actually don't even like making videos all that much. I don't really like hearing my voice like this. I don't. This is not, this isn't something that I just came up with. was like, you know what? I think I should make YouTube videos. No, because my design is not like this. I don't do it like this. But when he asked me to do it, then it started to develop something inside of me in terms of the gift that he placed in me to speak. So is it YouTube that's really all that important to me? No. Do I think that's the central focus? For him about me doing this is just like just to make so much money and do I mean I no I don't really care for that I'm doing it because he asked me he told me this is what I need you to do use this platform and so I will I will use this platform and I will speak no matter who's watching no matter who's listening because he asked me to because he wants me to and my obedience to him is far more important than how many viewers I get or how much money I make or whether you even like this content. If he gives me a message, I'll say it because I need to say it. Paul wrote, uh, he said something about like, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. That's what it feels like when you really have a relationship with Christ. Like It's like, woe is me if I am not sharing this. Woe is me if I don't tell you. Woe is me if I don't warn you. If I sit here idly and I don't try to find some way to communicate all of the goodness that comes from God, woe is me. I am miserable if I cannot tell you of how good he is. I am unhappy. My greatest joy is talking about him and talk, telling you about him and what he has done for me. So anyways, guys, that's the video for today. I hope you gleaned something from it. Whether you're listening or not, whether you're there or not, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a really great day. Take care. Bye.